You know, I really, I've been trying to avoid, well, not avoid, but prolong this. This is a video talking about the most unholy, most hated X-Men film, aside from Dark Phoenix. One of the most X-Men hated films of all time, X-Men Origins. And I know that it's more than just the fact that they got Deadpool wrong. I know I know it's more than just that. I know it's more than just the fact that they got Sabretooth uh, messed up. I know that. This is just an all wrong movie. And the Nostalgia Critic, being as bold as he is, decided to do a review of it. Let me turn this dog on air conditioner down because it's getting on my nerves. Shut up. So with that being said, let's get on into this. Because the last time we did something about the X-Men, I, I nearly had a heart attack. So brought to you by Devil May Cry 5, an over-the-top action-filled game rated M for Mature, now available on Xbox One. Previously on X Month. Uh... Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. Guy, remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to the final installment of X Month. Well, with X Men The Last Stand leaving the bad taste of Animanium dick in most people's mouths, it only made sense to cut out the middle X Man, so to speak, and focus on the one that people loved most. Even before the movies, Wolverine had always proven to be X Men's most popular character, even spawning his own. Hold on. Wait a minute. See if that makes a difference. The full comic series. So it was decided a new movie series called X Men Origins was to begin. Each film going into the backstory of a different mutant. There was actually talks for a while of Ian McKellen doing an X Men Origins Magneto movie. But everyone wanted to see how their most popular character, Wolverine, fared with his own film. Oh. Well, let me tell you, this is what they do with their most popular characters. I'd hate to see what they do with the shit-stained body parts of their unpopular ones. <laughs> X-Men fans have their differences, but one thing they can all agree on is X-Men Origins Wolverine sucks. What should have been the easiest movie to make the most awesome, badass, and fun became the most inconsistent, dull, and downright baffling in terms of story and character choices. Most X-Men fans and non-X-Men fans agree it's the worst of the movies. And we're here to analyze how this middle claw of a flick happened. Let's wrap up X-Month the right way. Well, a way. This is X-Men Origins Wolverine. It opens up in 1845. Well, my knowledge of Wolverine only goes back to 1974, so I guess I just have to judge it less as an adaptation and more as a shitty movie. Yeah. We see a young Logan as we discover his original name is Jimmy. So wait, Jimmy? We're brothers, Jimmy. You realize that? God, I so wish they retitled this now. As his house is broken into when a stranger apparently killed his father. The kid for the most part plays a young Wolverine pretty well, but you have to watch out when the person in charge directs you poorly in a shot. <laughs> Yep, that's the one. This kid should have a therapy session with the one from Christmas Story Live. Oh, the scary, hilarious consequences of bad direction. He extends out his bone claw. Tell me that's the name of a D&D character or a wrestler. Okay, good. And he stabs the man to death. But the man reveals that he was his father all along. So... Well, 
let's dive into these characters we just met to appreciate why this is so dramatic, or we're just leaving before we establish why we're supposed to care. Get used to that. It looks like his brother Victor will later become Sabretooth. Okay, that I do need clarification on. Okay, good. What were you thinking? Run away into a title sequence where they show every war they ever signed up for. Marvel Civil War, Saving Private Ryan Reynolds, X-Men Apocalypse Now. And through all of it, Wolverine grew up fast into Hugh Jackman and just kind of stayed that age for the next hundred years. Until these two movies and then suddenly, white hair. And Sabretooth grew up into Lee Schreiber, who finally perfected his dolphin jump. <laughs> In all seriousness, the credits are probably the best part of the movie. Which, saying that out loud, makes me realize how much trouble we're in. <laughs> They're captured, though, and approached by William Stryker, played this time by Danny Houston. Your sentence was carried out by a firing squad of 10 hundred hours. You take over. Who offers them the chance of a lifetime? Putting together a special team with special privileges. I'm calling it the Ass Avengers. They of course agree, and if you were to tell me the guy on this plane most likely to get a game-changing Marvel movie would be the one from The Proposal, I'd ask how you did things so wrong yet so right at the same time. That's funny, Wade. It's probably not as intimidating as having a gun or fingernails of a bag lady. To the film's credit, it is mostly cast well. Schreiber's a decent saber-tooth. We know Ryan Reynolds will be a good Deadpool. And maybe Wolverine listens to Black Eyed Peas dropped off in Nigeria, where they try to keep a low profile, walking like the poster for every Expendables movie. Cool, his mutant power is to bug bunny people to death. The enemy stops them in the elevator, though. They took the elevator? And Deadpool reveals his mutant power is using Guntana. An email said your prince was in trouble. We're here to transfer funds. I want this, but that is nothing. A souvenir. It looks like they're after a rock that the crime lord said was from a small village and he thought was just a useless souvenir. So, in hindsight, they could have just asked him for the damn thing instead of claiming so many goddamn lives. Right! Because it's sacred. Did he break his neck or adjust it? No, oh, thank you. Can you crack my back next? That's a Hey, you know what'd be interesting? Showing us how Sabretooth got his bloodlust. Yeah, like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, say, in this movie, Sabretooth just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just started getting this bloodlust, but they never explain why all of a sudden he st just started wanting to kill people, because that's random. That's just random, where Sabretooth just looks at him, oh, click, break your neck. Like, I... Look, we already know this movie is shit. Continue. I mean, it is called Origins, but we never goddamn see how these two became who they are. What happened when they ran away from home? They just went into war? How did that impact them as characters? How did it change them? What were they like before? What were they like after? The idea behind an origin story, especially a prequel, is to see how their actions and environment shape who they are. But who they are in the first 10 minutes is pretty much exactly who they are by the last 10 minutes. The biggest change is from a little boy to a grown man, and that only lasts a minute. Stuff happens to them all throughout the movie, but we never see how it alters them in any way. This Wolverine is the exact same as this Wolverine. He just doesn't have metal claws. And he's called Jimmy. Jimmy, we can't just let you walk away. Take this for example. Jimmy leads the team, and we cut to him. Stop. Hold on. Because I... Let me see if, if that makes sense. Wait a minute. What is Wolverine? I wanted to be sure so that because because I knew his name was not Jimmy. How the fuck you get the names wrong? How the hell do you get the name wrong? His name is James. James Howlett. His name is James. How? Why would you call him Jimmy? His name is James. Wolverine has never been called Jimmy. He has never been a Jimmy. You know, 
Honestly, that's what this whole fucking movie is. It's, it's, just, it's just a big, giant Jimmy. That's what it is. A big, giant Jimmy. A big load of Jimmy. And years later in the mountains with a woman. Who the hell is she? I mean, her name is Kayla, but who the hell is she? We don't see how they met, how they know each other, what she's like. We just know they're suddenly together and they smile so lovingly at each other that she's clearly dead. Was it the wars? Which one? All of them. Viet Civil World War Nam. I can't see Hugh Jackman ever slumming a performance, but even he doesn't seem as into it as usual. He look does at his it. face here as he's being given the origin story of his name. He doesn't look like he's letting it sink in enough that it'll one day become his identity. He looks more like he's going through his grocery list in his head. So he told Kiyokawatsu that the moon had asked for flowers. And every night, Milk, he looks up in the sauce, sauce, string and cheese, cheese. And and of count chocolates and season <laughs> He's not even hiding his accent half the time. So you're gonna take me to this island? You uh, have those powers over me? I ain't leaving you until you tell me where Victor is. I'm just gonna last nicely. I'm letting us go by. Come on, love. He sounds like an angry and constipated Rocco. Where I can kill Creed, Stryker, and pretty much everyone you hate in this world. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. But Jimmy's brother finds like you'd remember her name if I said it and pours fake blood all over her. I originally meant this as a joke, but as we find out later, that is what actually happens. If I can tell from a distance that's not real, how can this dumbass with heightened senses not pick that up? Wait a minute, what? Even the supposed big emotional moment seems half-assed, as the music and his screaming seems randomly cut short. This whole film feels like it was written by a Google program. Protagonist befriends love interest for five minutes of screen time. No, not even that. I swear, I I, I promise I wouldn't pause the video in in this reaction. I I I promise, and I broke it. This this, this whole thing is like is is like is a represent a representation of if Wikipedia got its hand on it, because you all know that Wikipedia they rarely get their information right, rarely, and this th this proves it. This just takes the. Old friend betrays protagonist at exactly 30 minute mark. Protagonist screams for 5.1 seconds. This should equal you crying. Why aren't you crying? You're not from around here, are you? Actually, my name's Sabretooth. I chose it based on a story where a spirit came down to Earth, and you know I chose it because it's cool. Well, why can't that be a thing? The cat dragged in. Guys, whatever this is, Take it outside. Now, Skeeter, they ain't hurting nobody. <laughs> now, Skeeter, they ain't hurting so nobody. They have an amazingly bad action sequence that you can barely make out because it's shot and edited, I think, by an actual Wolverine. Great. No, yeah, they say a firing squad tickles, but a log, that's what takes the mighty Wolverine out of action. Where is he? Where is he? He wakes up in a hospital where Stryker approaches him just in time to do his Pacino. Six years. No one knew me, and then you show up, and the next day she's dead. Where my children come to play with their toys. Stryker offers Jimmy a procedure to make him indestructible, despite him already being indestructible, by giving him an adamantium skeleton. Ah, I'm so glad we haven't seen this imagery yet. Hugh Jackman's acted this being experiment to shtick so much, he's literally playing it in his sleep. Or dead, I believe that too. Well, I guess he can't die. We just can't resuscitate this movie. He wakes up, though, hearing that they want to erase his memory, and he goes after them. But first... A tasteful glimpse of me bottom for the ladies. Do directors think if they just emphasize an X, that makes a good X-Men movie? I guess! It wouldn't be a comic book origin story without the friggin' nicest silver-haired angels that offer parental advice to our main character. Though their kindness might be characterized as borderline insanity if you would give shelter to a naked man breathing heavily in your barn. It's cool. Yeah, it's usually bigger than that. Mm, just had a rough night. Yeah, it's, uh... Well, I see no threat emulating from this. Feel free to stay in our home and play with my grandchildren. So Jimmy, despite using them earlier, apparently forgot he had claws as he looked incredibly surprised when they pop out of his knuckles. 
after he picked them up from Toontown. What is up with those effects? It looks like someone ripped off the fangs from the Tiger and Ice Age and glued them onto his hand. The first film had half the budget of this one, and they made them look okay. This flick, I keep expecting cartoon faces to pop on them like... Hi, Jimmy! Where are your claws? Now, why did you do... I swear I'm gonna pay for it. Well, logically, I should throw your crazy ass out, but we're Canadian! We have a stereotype to keep up. <laughs> Mostly. The old man gives Jimmy his son's jacket. Hate that scene. Thank God, also happened to be a muscle-bound beefcake. As the missus brings in some refreshments for them. I brought you some. Oh dear, I'll have to make more. Oh yeah, I forgot. I, I, I forgot all about this movie. What if an X is in the bar? Well, glad to know we elevated from Blue Sky Animation to DreamWorks Animation in the same film. Blow him to bits. Let's see if he can survive that. Uh, sir, he survived exactly that. a few minutes with the old couple. That's probably why they got rid of it so fast. Yep. We get a chase scene that on paper sounds pretty cool with a chopper, motorcycle, and jeep flying around and blowing shit up. But once again, it's shot and edited like a monkey shaking you by the shoulders going ah, ah, ah. It's legitimately sad when the trailer holds longer on a shot than the actual movie does. Wow. It's funny how good innocent people tend to die around you. By the way, if you're wondering if lighting the gas leading to a giant explosion and walking away without looking in 2009 was cliched, no. It was embarrassingly cliched. <sighs> so after summing up how people are liking this movie, Colonel, this is turning into a disaster. Wolverine rides to Vegas, where I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'd rather just see him gamble than carry out whatever mission he was on. Three Claw Stud, I totally watched that. Mimi Duke's nose. Fred Duke's develop a bit of eating disorder. We all got our coping mechanisms. Oh, yeah. So, you remember in X-Men a character called the Blob? One of the more famous foes whose mutant power was an indestructibly obese body? Well, no, he's just a dude who put on a lot of weight. Still a mutant, but his powers have absolutely nothing to do with his size. He just let himself go. It's like saying Superman is still an alien, but he doesn't have superhuman strength. He just mimics pumping iron a lot. Come on, man, look at him. Blob. Blob had bitch tits. I'm so unmotivated by this whole stupid scene. I'm falling asleep. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to stay awake for y'all. It's just this this fucking movie, yo. This. That was funny. You know, with how PC things are becoming, you think an actor who isn't overweight playing an overweight character would be called Fatface? Jimmy beats him up to get information on where Sabretooth and Stryker are, and it looks like the two of them are out hunting another mutant. A young Peter Bodanovich! Please don't! Just remember when we meet up years later and I grow my hair blonde and I never talk. We are never to reference this. Blob says Jimmy can find another mutant who escapes Stryker's experiments named Gambit. I don't really know why he looks like Sawyer from Lost, but he gives us the only cool shot in the movie, so I have no choice but to like it. Two years I rode in that hell, and I never... <laughs> That's kind of funny, too. Tell me something, Jimmy. But still not as funny as when he calls him that. You even know how to kill me. I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. He was literally just knocked out. How'd he get up there so fast? I... And I don't know aeronautics, but I'm pretty sure you can't helicopter down via cane the same way Dixie Kong does with her hair. You're Gambit! You and Dixie Kong should not be mentioned in the same sentence! Sabretooth escapes as Jimmy and Gambit stay for honestly no reason to fight. <laughs> This is a cartoon. All that's missing is a Tom and Jerry scream when he falls. Ah! Gambit finally agrees to help Jimmy get Stryker as Stryker puts the finishing touches on his latest mutant experiment. A few more hours. And he will respond to my commands. Absolutely. We're gonna make Momo a reality urban legend, my ass! Jimmy finally catches up with Stryker, and you gotta love how our lead is so unimpressive he's not even worth a head turn. I've learned that nothing motivates the men in your family like revenge. But gasp, what's her face is still alive? Wow, that's so underwhelming and not worth shitting a care that even Jimmy doesn't know how to react to it. He just kind of awkwardly kneels and lets out a reverse quack. 
Wolverine. It's revealed that she worked with Stryker because he's holding her sister hostage, and her mutant power is she can touch people and influence them to think whatever she'd like. Wow. Now, on top of asking wow. why she doesn't just use that power to have Stryker hand her sister over, I mean, cry! From a storytelling standpoint, how cool it would have been if we saw them meet. She yeah. holds his hand, and from that point on, we have to re-watch the scene and ask, was this real love or just her mutant power? There could have been a brilliant dramatic setup here. But because that would mean making a connection with the characters instead of just doing things. Gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing, gotta do this thing. We're developed now. Jimmy tells her exactly what he told Fox after seeing this movie. I'm just a fool about playing. So obviously it's time to fight those who wronged him or he walks away. Wolverine. Wow. This movie hurts. You know, this is all so amazingly underwhelming, you kinda wonder what Stryker was talking about at the end of X2. Remember when he was bringing up his past? You're an animal then, you're an animal now. If you really knew about your past, what kind of person you were, the work we did together. We stole a rock, gave you some Tiny Toon claws, and this lady you barely know didn't die. We were animals. Animals! I guess Sabretooth reveals why he suddenly betrayed his brother. Give me the adamantium, Test King. We had a deal! You would never survive the operation. So, over a hundred years of knowing this guy, and you totally betray him because you just wanted adamantium in your bones? I guess. Something the guy says wouldn't work anyway? I think Tenderheart and Grumpy Bear have a more complex rivalry than that! <laughs> returns and helps free all the mutant cameos and yeah let's get this over with the mutant that was being worked on earlier was deadpool wait is that you i want you to look at that face look at the face that i'm looking at thank god ryan reynolds decided to redo this in a better light. Thank God. Thank God he decided to do it because this is just not acceptable. Like, like, okay, I, I, I know that when this came out, a lot of people were pissed. A lot of people, you know, you know, said, you know, that this was just beyond bad. This, like, when I, I, back when I was a kid, I didn't really care much about it because I didn't know much about Deadpool until I un, like until like years later this if I knew about Deadpool I, I would have been pissed I would have been pissed off I mean I still am pissed off that uh, even the fact that that Fox you know like they they, they just attempted to, to think that this that this was gonna you know wow us you know that this uh, this was gonna be their cash cow. I did. I did. I did. I did, I did mm. Joseph, Rio. Ah, that this was going to have us give them their money. All right, and I apologize for my stuttering. I I do that whenever I get excited about something, but like, with that you know, whenever I want to rush the point. But my point is that this was just this was a travesty. This this whole movie was a travesty. Sabretooth finding uh, finding uh, a dumbass reason to betray Wolverine, uh, the whole Striker shit, the girl working for Striker, her dumbass power, um, the Blob, the Not Gambit. It's just I didn't see him flick one card. I mean, I mean, we saw him play do 52 pickup in that scene, but not one card at like Wolverine or Sabretooth for nobody. Nope, just the cane, pretend like it was a helicopter, and then just falling. And then I think that was on the only time that we ever saw Gambit in this movie. I don't know why the fuck we even saw Cyclops in here. Why did we? Why did? Why? Why did we need to see Cyclops? Why did we need to see Cyclops? For what? For what reason did we need to see Cyclops in this? Young Cyclops. And him just getting attacked. By Sabretooth. Why, why did we need that? 
I thought I thought this was about Wolverine. They don't even show the timestamps as to like how long it, it, it has been like because we saw Wolverine in, in the war. We saw him with that other girl, then saw him with the, uh, with the like we don't even know what time period. I don't even know what time period I'm looking at. Am I looking at the recent or am I look am I still looking at back around the time after the war? Am I what like what am I what am I looking at here? What am I looking at here? By God, it's like the comic leaped onto the screen. Yeah, Striker finally figured out how to shut you up. But brilliant trolling can't keep one silent for long. Thank you, Deadpool. Thank you, Deadpool. Not what happens in this film, though? The, oh my God! Can you imagine every copy of this movie they made afterwards? They put that part in, and that's where it ends. They roll the credits and everything. Oh my God! Ryan Reynolds, get on that! Yes. And Deadpool uses all the mutant powers surgically given to him. The dumb. The dumb. The stupid. And Sabretooth, right the hell out of nowhere, decides he likes Jimmy again, and they decide to fight him. this high-tech ingenuity and you have to type in your commands like a 1980s RPG? Also, I want to point out something. Why does this un-Deadpool have swords like he's Baraga? Is that what y'all were getting at? Y'all were trying to make a, a, a Baraga in this? Oh my god. Oh my god. some great space balls logic working here it's a competition of which sucky effect can destroy the other toy story claws or invaders in laser beams only the crappiest shall survive <laughs> they end up defeating him but as jimmy says this isn't over this doesn't change anything between us victor we're brothers and brothers look out for each other don't unless your memory is erased and i go working for a magnet man you know how it goes who gives a dick is dying though and jimmy goes to say goodbye Really? You don't look it. You don't even seem annoyed to be dying. You can say things all you want, movie, but unless you commit to it. <laughs> Striker shoots two animanium bullets into his head and... Yep, that's twice they try to fake you out that he might die. Ooh, and here's another nail biter. Spider-Man might not be back in Endgame. See far from home. <clears throat> I should make you pull the trigger. But that would make us no better than you. Walk into your feet, bleed. Well, that'll result in tons of people dying, but why start making sense now? Well, hi there, Mr. Clean. Mighty glad to know you. You're safe now. Who are you? Huh, must have missed those on the x-ray. Also weird that Jimmy never told Xavier exactly what he did remember. Yeah, I woke up around a destroyed power plant on this exact date. Oh, yes, I was totally there. With that starting point, I'm sure we can piece together where you came from. Oh, guess it doesn't matter. Good luck. Yeah, it was a shame that Gambit guy didn't get much screen time, but I'm sure he'll get another starring role in a big moneymaker. And that was X-Men Origins Jimmy. I mean Wolverine. I mean... Jimmy. Yeah, because this definitely was not Wolverine. No, it Wolverine wasn't. is one of the coolest characters in comic book history, but none of that would be reflected if you went off of this movie alone. It doesn't add up to the continuity of the films, it doesn't please any comic fans. It's way too boring and cliched to entertain newcomers, it's just a disaster. X-Men has had a shaky history in both comics and film, but when it comes to the absolute worst X-Men flick there is, you need look no further than X-Men Origins Jimmy. And that was X Month. I hope everybody had a good time. I'm ready! Hyper oh, jeez. Oh, well, I was in the animated intro, so I just assumed I'd be flying around as Rogue. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that, that was more of a style thing. Wait, so I'm, I'm not gonna be an X Men? Well, aren't we all X Men in our hearts? No. We are now. Congratulations! <laughs> I'll make it up to you later. Just get out of here! So I hope you 
enjoy it next month and- I'm ready. Oh, for God's sake. I take offense at that. I'm not having us as the X-Men! Then why'd you have us in the intro? I just told the animator to draw something cool! Yeah, that was cool. Now let's actually do it. I can't! X month is over, so get out of here! Fine. Great. I'm ready. How did you even- I'm ready for my cameo as Dadly! I'm not doing that! And besides, you didn't cameo anywhere else! Well, sure I did! Here, look! You see? You always need a cameo from the creator. You didn't create the nostalgia critic. Sure I did. Look, when a man and a woman love each other very much. Ah! <laughs> hey, critic, we're here for X month. Oh my god, it's already over! And you didn't invite us? Well, it was your idea! Exactly. exactly. Oh my god, can you just go away before other people spontaneously appear in my corner? Ah! You false advertised critic! Yeah, none of us were in X month. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you all somehow. Oh, you mean by reviewing a movie starring a person you never wanted to talk about again? Stop right there! I know how this works. You bring up a movie or a person I don't want to talk about, and once I talk about them, their picture pops up, and I'm stuck reviewing it. Well, I'm not falling for it this time, so get out! Well, I think she was just talking about... Out! Out! Everybody out! Fireball! Out! Oh, it's oh. like Christmas with the Hitlers! Now she is carrying you on There, now I'm not bound to anything. I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Damn it! Oh, man. <sighs> yeah, well. What can I say that I haven't already said? Like, I, I poured all of my heart into, like, the last reaction. And, and this one is just... I was falling asleep. I'm sorry. I was falling asleep. It's not because I'm tired. It's because this movie is so... Eh. It's just... It's, it's bland. It's uh, it's unwanted. I don't... I, I don't want... I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with any more of the X-Men that's, that's coming from Fox. And thank God that we're not getting... Hopefully not getting that new Mutants movie... That was, that was supposed to be coming out later on next year, like early in um, the next year, called New Mutants. I hope to God that they don't do it because we don't need it. We we, we don't need it. We don't need it. The the whole the whole aftermath of how they brought out Dark, um, Dark Phoenix was enough to tell them that no, scrap this whole idea, please, please Disney son, don't don't let them do this. Don't 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 let Fox. Have another hoorah and, and all that. Like, please save us. Please, 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 please. This has been Master Rio Sakurai. And I just, just, let's all come together and just pray to God that we don't get anything that has to do with the X-Men star and Fox. Please. Let's just, let's just not. Just, let's, let's just, let's just not, okay?